Hello everyone, this is Hillary with Dominion Tea, and today we're going to talk about rooibos and honeybush. These two tea zanes originate from South Africa, more specifically the Cedarburg Mountain region uh, in West Cape, South Africa, just north of Cape Town. This region actually is one of the most biologically diverse regions in the world and happens to be the birthplace of the modern human. This region also is designated a World Heritage Site, uh, so it is cared for uh, mainly by the South African Rooibos Council uh, in order to preserve its uh, biological diversity along uh, with the assistance of the South African government and the UN. So let's talk a little bit about this plant and how it came to be a beverage. So rooibos was actually drunk for over 300 years by the local indigenous tribes of South Africa. It was the Dutch in the 1700s that discovered what they were drinking and uh, looked at how they were making it and turned it into a commercial industry. So why did they turn rooibos into a commercial industry? Well, in the 1700s, importing tea was really expensive. So rooibos made a great substitute. So why was it a good substitute? This is one of the few tea zanes um, you're going to come across that has a close mouthfeel and flavor to black tea. And so how does it get that? So these legumes, right, so both honeybush and rooibos are part of the legume family, actually don't grow leaves. They grow needles. And those needles are harvested. They are crushed a little bit, bruised to kick off oxidation, and then allowed to oxidize and dry. In oxidizing, they produce out um, a heavier, earthier, woodier flavor um, that it will rival. It's not an exact match, but comes close to black tea. Of course, uh, being from the legume family and not from the same family as our Camellia sinensis, uh, it doesn't produce caffeine. And so it is completely caffeine free. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Dutch created a small commercial industry. It stayed small well until uh, the mid-1900s, at which point the South African government took it as uh, an industry to invest in to help lift uh, its citizens out of poverty uh, and to take advantage of a crop that was very unique to the country. In fact, to this day, scientists have tried uh, to plant rooibos and honeybush in other places, both in South Africa and other regions in Africa, and are not having luck uh, in it uh, taking root there. Uh, and so we, uh, as an industry, while we watch the demand for this beverage rise, also take a very deep breath because uh, that biologically diverse region is also very uh, susceptible to climate change. And there is definite concerns from the rooibos growers and the rooibos industry as a whole that uh, the swing in temperatures that they are seeing uh, could absolutely adversely affect the crop. And so that is something that we will watch uh, and continue. But as uh, world interest kind of expands, and as you as the tea drinker try to expand your palate, rooibos and honeybush are great alternatives to straight tea. Um, easiest way to brew them is with boiling water. Uh, you're not going to want water temperature much lower because you will not get the full mouthfeel and flavor from it. And you're going to want to steep somewhere in the range of 7 to 10 minutes. Now, I will admit I steep uh, closer to 5, uh, but that's a personal preference. Uh, but please play uh, and enjoy. And as you think about kind of alternatives or a beverage you can drink a little bit closer to bedtime, uh, rooibos and honeybush are definitely worth you exploring. We hope you enjoyed learning more about tea with us. Hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when we add more videos to our channel. And check out the highlighted videos to learn even more about tea. And last but not least, you can check out all of the teas we talk about in our videos at dominiontea.com.